Hello everyone, welcome back Warrior students. Today I have a comprehensive arms guide for you. In this one I try to summarize up everything that we have learned on this channel that is possible to pick up even for less experienced players and should give you everything you need to start off as a new arms warrior as well as refreshing the knowledge you already have and maybe even give you some new ideas to min-max your performance. We will start with some arms warrior characteristics first, then we will move over to some necessities that you want to have in terms of interface. After that we can talk about single target DPS and AoE DPS and at last we look at talents and stats. You can use the timestamps down below to maneuver through the chapters of course. Arms Warrior Characteristics Classified as Meat Cleaver and Physical DPS Support Damage Type is Melee and Physical, almost 100% DPS Button Press Sequence Type is a Dynamic Priority List This means you have no rotation and you have no static priority list Instead, your priority list will change mid-fight due to Haste Rating and Rage Generation most important player skills that you want to bring or that you want to improve on is quick micro so that you are fast on your keyboard and your mouse, a fast decision making, a strong focus which will most likely bring a faster decision making and encounter knowledge. Your strengths are a high single target burst potential, an insane cleave burst potential, that you can greatly enhance physical damage of friendly units or greatly decrease the physical damage dealt by enemies via strong or unique buffs and debuffs. Warriors can use damage taken to increase the DPS output. This unique ability can for example be used to make healers deal damage with their mana like the life tap ability of Warlocks. Weakness are obviously none but things that can be seen as a weakness are insane threat output and no way to wipe it. No real range DPS option, that there's always something to improve and that we have a very good scaling with stats, therefore a very noticeable DPS drop off if important buffs or debuffs or gear is missing. Okay, let's get to the minimum necessities that I want you to have if you plan to play an arms warrior, even if it's only on a decent level. First, you want to have keybinds for at least Mortal Strike, Whirlwind, Execute, Cleave, Heroic Strike, Sweeping Strikes, Charge, Intercept, Blood Rage, Sunder Armor, Victory Rush and Pummel. Then you want to write some simple macros. Because we need the easy way to start the tech after we stop the tagging for whatever reason, we are going to write a start the tech in a slash start the tech in a macro for pretty much all of our skills. Like so. Slash start a tech and then slash cast mortal strike for example. You want to do that for at least Mortal Strike, Execute, Slam and Whirlwind. For Cleave and Heroic Strike it needs to be the other way around like so slash cast Cleave slash start attack. Why this is the case I will not explain here but you can ask me in the comments if you wonder. You have the option to write this start attack macros for all your spells like pummel, thunder armor or whatever. You have one more option to put your target based skills on mouse over exist macros. This kind of macro allows you to execute or interrupt or thunder targets that you don't want to focus right now. Like so. I can just thunder him up while I'm auto attacking him or I can execute him, I can mortal strike him or pummel him if I want to and yeah. The macro text for mouse over exist um, is like this but all the macros that you at least want to have 
will be in the video description anyways so yeah this macro type will be in the video description as well so you could just copy that next up i highly suggest two more macros and this is for one a simple salt and board macro for this you just type in slash equip and then you post in the name of your one hander and then in the in the row below you type in slash equip and then the name of the shield and next you just want to do the same but you want to bind this together with defensive stance and shield block so that you can just with one button press go into defensive stance equip your one hander and shield and cast shield block this will save your life a lot of times every time you pull threat on a very angry mob you can just use this and the chances of you surviving are extremely high ach yeah i forgot to mention that we need a way to stop cast our heroic strike and cleave like if it's cute that we can cancel it and for this you have two options you can use a slash stop casting macro or you can use a slash stop attack macro all right the next two things that i want you to have is for one a good way to track your rage like this rage bar and a good way to track your auto attack like this swing timer my only requirement to the rage bar is that it gives away your rage level at all times in a way that it is easy for you to receive. With the swing timer it will be a little bit more complicated, um, a lot more complicated actually, and I suggest you download weak auras for this, like an add-on that is written like this and you want to download it and, it and install it and then we are going to make a swing timer together. So if you have installed weak auras, you can open up the add-on menu by typing in slash wa in the chat. Then the add-on menu will open and it will show like all your weak auras here. But if you just installed it, you have obviously no weak auras. So I will delete my rage bar for this. And now you want to do one thing. You want to click on the link in the video description this, that says swing timer vago.io and then you're going to get on this internet page here and then you can click on copy tbc weak aura string then you go back into your game in the add-on menu you click on import and then you just paste it in you click on import here and shwoop de whoops you have your swing timer so now this swing timer is customized to fit my needs and you will most likely need to change it up a little bit so you can do all things with this you can make it smaller bigger you can um, change the look of it like here you can change the look of it and if you drag it over here or somewhere you can just adjust the size it's to one that is like this for now and you will notice that if you adjust the size the texts that are inside of the swing timer will change their location like this the one text is now over here you can adjust this in the menu of the swing timer as well let me show you real quick so you have your texts you have your texts over here and this one is percent p it shows the remaining time of a timer so it, it shows like how many time is how many seconds are left on your auto attack and this one is the percent t1 and this is the most important one because this shows the total duration of the swing timer which equals your attack speed and your attack speed is extremely important this will be you will know why after the rotation part so you can change the size and everything of the text and you can as well anchor it somewhere else or you can yeah, work with the offsets here if i put it on to zero it will be over here and then if i want to have it a little bit more into the center 
I can just adjust this a little bit like this and now it should be yeah a little bit closer so I don't need to go all the way over there with my attention to see how much attack speed I have yeah so this is how you want to customize your text but there are two things in the swing timer that are a little bit more important than the text or at least at one text so because this text over here is not really that important this one is the more important text but we have two tick markers in the string timer over here so what are they used for so the tick that is to the left here shows me my actual slam timing because you can press your slam a little bit before your auto attack occurred just in case you didn't know and this has to do with your latency so you cannot just copy my tick markers most of the time and therefore we will need to change this one the other one is a marker that shows me when i can use a spell with a gcd without locking myself out from casting a slam for example if i cast a spell when within gcd when the swing timer is behind this tick marker i cannot cast the perfect slam for example if i press motor strike over here i need to delay my slam a lot however if i cast the spell um, before this marker i can still cast my slam this is very important for your rotation as well so the tick marker for your gcd is always 1.5 if you do not use latency if you do not use the latency slam method and if you use the latency slam method it's 1.5 plus your latency tick so plus the tick on the left side so my latency tick is on 0.22 and now therefore my gcd tick would be on 1.75 so but how do you want to set up the latency tick this is like the elephant in the room right now i guess and for this you go on to the vagoio website again and you type in slam delay then you find this slam auto delay week aura and then you can again copy and paste the week aura into your game import so now we have a number over here and this number will show the time between your slam and your outer tech hits the target or with other words the time you have delayed your next outer attack so if we cast slam for example right at the end of our timer like without using our latency we have a slam delay of like 0.30 if we use if we cast it too early like here we obviously skip the whole outer attack and therefore our delay is at 3 now it's at 6 now it's at 10 like this so if we try to hit the marker on the exact spot we get a lower number like 0.15 I press it right now I press it a little bit before the marker and I get like 0.10 and something like this so I know that I need to increase the value for the tick marker a little bit and you want to be very careful with this for example right now it's on 22 so we are going to set it on 28 and now we can try again to hit the marker now we lower the we lowered our slam delay already a little bit at least on this one try still at like yeah we lowered it a little bit so we can actually go even further let's do it on like 34 Now the tick is uh, really far in the swing timer now we are at 0 0.07 which is um, pretty nice if the tick marker is like on a tick where you always get 
on a position where you get like always 0, 0.0 then you are very likely to make a mistake like I did right there but yeah this tick marker seems to be well placed and last one recommendation that I have for you is a weak aura that shows you your sweeping strikes duration and your sweeping strike stacks like how much is left of both of those because this can change your decision making in a cliff scenario like here you can see this weak aura shows me the time that is left on my sweeping strikes and the stacks that are left on my sweeping strikes as well all right let's get to the most important part how to actually deal single target dps now like i said arms warrior has a prior list that will change with your haste and your rage level uh, to start off, we first going to look at the standard situation. So the standard situation holds true every time your attack speed is between 3, 40, so you're doing one melee swing every 3.4 seconds and 250, so you're doing a melee attack every 2.5 seconds, outside of execute phase of course. In the standard situation your first priority is to cast the slam after each auto attack to use mortal strike on cd as good as possible and to balance your rage around 50 in this order to balance your rage level around 50 i recommend a strategy that evolves around pressing heroic strike every time you see your rage is on 60 plus and, and cancel it if your rage is like below 55 for example I now have 50 rage, I press slam, I press heroic strike, I press mortal strike, I cancel heroic strike. So like this. Every time you see your rage is above 60, you press it. Every time you see it's on a too low level, you cancel it. The more and more you use this method, the faster you get with pressing and cancelling it, like the faster you get with analyzing the situation you're in and if you actually want to cast an heroic strike or not. Um, and at some point you can react extremely fast and this will increase your DPS a lot. So your standard rotation without using heroic strike would look something like this. Auto attack slam mortal strike, auto attack slam whirlwind, auto attack slam mortal strike. And now you see we have a time here where we don't care where we cannot follow up our slam with whirlwind or mortal strike you saw me right there using three slams to cover the time um, you have multiple options here to use the three slams is only one of them but yeah let me first explain your other options so in this time you have like we will pretend now that the whirlwind is on cooldown when i when i use mortal strike here so we use mortal strike and now we can't do anything so this would be the perfect time to refresh our thunder stacks um, this is the perfect time to maybe cast better shout if it's uh, about to run out this is the perfect time to use demoralizing shout and if you don't need to do any of this and you don't have enough rage to actually spam your um, to spam your slam you can for example cast a hamstring just try to fill it with something smart you could as well swap stance maybe um, for a, you could for example as well swap stance and use thunderclap in the, this situation all right so this was the standard situation so what changes if our attack speed goes above 340 if our attack speed goes above 340 we can use two globals like so but this uh, situation will not be uh, a common one because this would mean that we have no flurry stacks and yeah this is not really a situation that you want to be in or maybe you are debuffed with an attack speed debuff all right but more okay but far more interesting is what happens if your attack speed actually goes below 250 so at some point when your attack speed goes below 250 
your slam will become less valuable than your mortal strike and then so and at some point even as your whirlwind the thing is that the benchmark will change and this depends on your ability to use the latency slam because with using the latency slam you are delaying your auto attack a little bit less and therefore you adding value to your slam and increasing your attack speed takes away value from your slam so the better you are the less value you take away and therefore the benchmark will be lower if you are really good with using latency for your slam your benchmark is at about two seconds if you are extremely bad your benchmark is at about 230 or 240 if you are yeah medium your benchmark is on 220 but how do you actually want to play it so it's very simple every you just spam your mortal strike and your whirlwind and every time you can you fit in a slam like so note that i'm using heroic strike in this clip far more aggressive so what i mean by this is i use it on far lower range rage level this is because the wage income is a lot higher than in your standard situation because you have first of all more attack speed and second of all there's recklessness running and other cooldowns so the damage is higher we critting all the time this makes our rage income a lot higher and therefore we can spend and therefore we can be a lot more aggressive with our way of using heroic strike another thing is that outer attacks can glance and if they glance they do not crit so if you get a glancing blow inside of your recklessness window this is extremely sad if you press heroic strike the outer attack cannot glance and will do a little bit of extra damage so therefore using heroic strike in recklessness window is a lot more important than if recklessness is not active and you need to be far more aggressive with heroic strike the same goes for phases of an encounter where you take a lot of damage so your rage income is genuinely higher this means that you will be that you will need to be far more aggressive with your heroic strikes now this situation when you have a lot of attack speed is most of the time as well the window when you can deal the most damage because there is bloodlust running and your other cooldowns and therefore mastering this is extremely important and this is why i said at the beginning that a quick micro and a fast decision making are the two most important skills it's because with all these heroic strikes and heroic strike cancelling and this fast attack speed you need to be extremely fast on your decision making and you need to be extremely fast on your keyboard all right but what about execute phase so execute has an extremely bad trade if we look at damage dealt per rage spent it's uh, worse than mortal strike whirlwind or slam depend on your gear sometimes it's more worth than whirlwind but most of the time it's um, less worth than whirlwind and therefore using execute is only really an option if the rage that you spend on execute would otherwise been lost now to judge this um, can be a little bit hard i like to use execute more or less as a filler for example you remember the window when we can't really press anything because mortal strike is on cooldown after the slam like here now we slam again and here i would use an execute for example then if i feel like i will overcap a lot of rage if i don't use execute here because i know there is um, damage from the boss incoming or because i'm i'm a millisecond before a, an outer attack for example let's say i have like 50 rage or so or 70 and recklessness is active and my swing timer is over here um, then i can already tell that if i'm not pressing execute right here that I'm going to overcap a shit ton of rage with the next melee attack because maybe the melee attack triggers swords back wind fury or even if it doesn't I overcap like 30 rage and in this situation I like to just um, press and execute there now obviously if you have recklessness up you get a shit ton of rage and if you 
get um, damaged via boss mechanics for example on loot reaver he is putting he is dealing damage to the raid all the time those are bosses where you can where you are almost safe with spamming execute and mortal strike and whirlwind all the time at some point execute obviously overcomes slam when you get a lot of haste so if you are at like 1.6 attack speed you can just skip on slamming you can just spam mortal strike execute and whirlwind and sometimes even heroic strikes for example like in the scenario i explained before let's say i have like 100 rage let it be 100 rage and i press mortal strike here i cannot i couldn't press uh, execute before this ring would come through in this case i would use an heroic strike so one more time i press like whirlwind over here so i need to queue an heroic strike because otherwise i would overcap on rage so yeah all in all you want to be very smart you want to always analyze the attack speed that you have and the rage that you gain and want to make decisions based on that so there are small changes um, in the value of your spells if you use an axe or a mace or if you don't have wind fury compared to a sword with wind fury so your ideal situation but those changes are kind of small and if you have a question to this because you think or you see yourself in a situation a lot where you don't have wind fury and where you and you have an axe or a mace just um, ask me on discord because for this video it doesn't really fit in here all right let's get to the frustrating part of being an arms warrior and this is cleave and aoe so in cleave and aoe scenarios your number one priority is always whirlwind because yeah whirlwind is just an insane amount of damage per rage spent um, increasing with the targets that are present of course let's say for example there are four targets whirlwind always wants to be your first damage dealing global because it has four chances to crit and it has four chances to proc sword spec and therefore you have a high chance or like a really high chance to get your flurry stacks rolling instantly and this is extremely important because if your first global doesn't crit you need to wait 3.6 seconds for your next auto attack so for your next rage income and uh, yeah if this happens you're pretty much you're very far behind your second priority is to use up as many sweeping strike stacks as possible for this a lot of the time you want to bank up rage before you use sweeping strikes ideally like depend on your buffs your rage gain and depend strongly on your buffs your attack speed and so on but ideally between 50 and 100 rage you want to have banked up before you cast your sweeping strikes your third priority is cleave now an outro attack and a slam technically deals more damage than a cleave but a cleave has two chances to proc wind fury and ultra attack slam has only one chance to proc wind fury and therefore you will see yourself getting a lot more rage and a lot more extra attack procs if you value cleave over a slam then your third priority I already gave it away kinder is slam and then lastly mortal strike all right but this was obviously just a brief overlook on how you want to behave in a cleave scenario now i will give you some tips so first i already told you before you use sweeping strikes you want to bank up the rage that you think is needed to use up basically all the stacks so every little bit of extra text that you have available to you like sword spec or wind fury will decrease the rage that you need most of the time if you're using an axe or a mace and you don't have wind fury then you basically need a hundred rage to even get close to use up all the stacks and most of the time you're not really able to however if you have wind fury and the sword and um, decent buffs a lot of the time it's enough to bank up like 50 rage or so and there's one more very important thing so you don't want to just cast sweeping strikes you want to cast it so shortly before your auto attack hits the target therefore with this method obviously you increase the chance of uh, using up all the stacks so for example i would wait until my auto attack is shortly before 
being casted. And then I swap sweeping strikes and maybe follow up with slam and wheel wind. There we go, I used up all stacks without Vane Fury. So yeah, to cast sweeping strikes at the right timing, there's actually one more extremely important thing. And here our latency tick marker comes in clutch again. And this is that we want to cast sweeping strikes shortly before our auto attack hits, right? So we can maximize the chance of getting off all the 10 stacks. But there is a catch and this is that our auto attack is technically being casted when the when the swing timer hits our latency tick. So this means if we cast sweeping strikes over here, our, our auto attack will not profit from sweeping strikes and I can show you here. So here we have 10 stacks. I casted sweeping strikes round, round about here. So with the latency tick again, we are increasing our performance just a little bit. So there are two openings that I like to do with sweeping strikes and this is like the mini combo and the big boy combo. So for the mini combo you only need 30 plus 20 equals 50 plus 25 rage equals 75 and this combo is just queue up cleave, wait for the swing timer is shortly before your latency tick, cast sweeping strike, cast real wind. Like this. Immediately use up three stacks and deal a lot of damage. So the next combo is like the big boy combo and for this you need just 15 rage more which equals 90 and this factors in a slam as well. Like this. With this combo you're extremely likely to use up all your sweeping strike stacks. The next thing that I need to talk about is one little trick that you can do. And this is when you see your sweeping strikes comes up shortly before your outer attack, uh, shortly after your outer attack would hit, you can stop attack for a little bit and then just cast sweeping strikes when your outer attack is more or less ready. Like so. So now the next thing that you want to be aware of this is that all of your extra attacks or that all of your attacks basically like hamstring, mortal strike, um, slam, whirlwind, pummel, thunder armor, all those things can proc sword specs. And sword specs, if they proc while you have queued up cleave, like if I queue up cleave and then a sword spec procs, the sword spec will cast the slam. And this way you can fish basically for sword specs when you have nothing else to do and a lot of rage. For example, if you have, yeah, there you saw me do like three cleaves in three seconds or so. This is due to, yeah, sword specs procking cleaves and a lot of the time you have everything on cooldown like mortal strikes on cooldown um, whirlwind is on cooldown and you have a shit ton of rage because maybe you have even pulled threat on one mob that you can just tank and in this situation you want to spam cleave and your other buttons like spam cleave together with mortal strike spam cleave together with hamstring spam cleave together with real wind this is why I have those three macros here. Those macros are hamstring cleave, hamstring cleave, um, then I have cleave whirlwind and cleave mortal strike for those situations. And these are the situations when you can pump like an absurd mass of DPS onto the foes and this is the time to shine basically. However, you want to be aware that Hamstring and Pummel and all that stuff uses up sweeping strike stacks. So I can show you right here. Hamstring uses up these stacks 
and is only doing or cleaving like 100 damage or so or 60 damage so the method that I like to call tornado cleave where you try to get up get out more cleaves with the help of sword spec fishing is not um, an option while you have your sweeping strike still active now by the time you are at least decent in playing the cleave and AOE rotation and maybe even use some tricks to maximize your performance like tornado cleave you you noticed that there is a much greater challenge in not pulling threat than to actually deal damage and this is what I meant by the frustrating part of playing arms warrior you are technically able to unleash an absolute carnage onto the enemies especially if there are multiple ones but you are not really able to because threat will never allow you to do so like you will almost never like in 99% of the cases you are not able to really dish out as much damage as you possibly could and this is for me personally this is extremely frustrating but it's something that we have to deal with and yeah and to get around this you want to be creative so giving the tank time to pull threat is obviously something that you want to do however this is far less effective on a warrior than on most other classes because if I let the tank pull threat, I'm pulling rage. And if I pull rage, I don't really DPS stop as long as I don't have 100 rage because I'm just banking up damage that I will then unleash. And therefore, giving the tank time to pull the threat <laughs> doesn't really give you anything most of the time because then you give the tank like four or five seconds, which is a lot. And then you do your super duper cleave combo and then you still pull threat obviously because yeah you just unleashed like 20k damage in barely a second and yeah therefore this is most of the time not really enough there are other methods though for example what i like to do because we have no warrior tank is i like to charge in do a thunderclap do a demo shout and then if i have that much rage i will just start my cleave start my cleave adventure in battle stance use up some of the rage i have left and still i was able to use up like eight sweeping strike stacks so this has a couple of advantages first of all i give the tank a lot of time to pull threat and second i apply two very good debuffs that decrease the dps of the mobs so my tanks can maybe opt for a little bit for a little bit of an aggra more aggressive setup for trash and if i pull threat the mobs have two very strong debuffs that reduce their damage to me so i am a lot more likely to survive the other method is another method is to apply thunders like use whirlwind and thunder until you can start cleaving but this method again you're technically just banking up damage here you're banking up rage and you're applying thunder stacks so yeah most of the time or a lot of the time you will still pull threat with this method when you then actually start to dps now that the warrior pulls threat on trash is just a given thing this is why you have plate armor and this is why you have a lot of stamina on your plate gear so most of the time you are able to survive if you only pull one mob because the tank can taunt him back and the healers obviously are there as well that can heal you however if you notice that if you notice that the tank is not really fast with taunting or the healers are not really fast with healing and you still die a lot of the time then you have the macro i gave you at the start of the video where you go defensive stance sword and board shield and shield block all at once and yeah basically i never died when i used this macro and i use it like every uh, every three trash pulls i use the macro to survive and yeah, this is how I do it with the cleave but I honestly know for myself that I could improve at least a little bit in cleave 
Like it's a lot harder to do cleave DPS with a two-hander and not pull threaten on two one-handers just because your damage is a lot more explosive. But still I think I could do a little bit of a better job there. So yeah, but this is basically everything I know and everything I tried to get a better performance in cleave scenarios that are all in all extremely frustrating. Alright, next up stats and talents. So for stats you want to have obviously your hit cap, so 9% without, without boomkin and 6% with boomkin. So sometimes if you have like 5 hit against 50 strength or something like this, the strength for steals obviously more DPS, so you can keep an eye on that. However, for me, I hate to miss, I hate if the enemy dodges and therefore I really like to have my hit cap, even though maybe this means I deal like 2 DPS less, I don't really care about this, like about 2 DPS, if this means that I sometimes miss the target 2 times in a row, this would just make me throw off and therefore I like to go for my hit cap, even if I have an item that is technically 5 DPS stronger or something like this. The other thing is after hit you want to balance your attack power and your crit chance. Why you want to balance this, I like to quote someone in my discord who said if you hit like a bitch you crit like a bitch with this which is pretty accurate. So all the crit in the world doesn't provide you anything if the numbers that you crit for are extremely low. The other thing is that crit and strength uh, shine in different situations. For example in a fight where you use recklessness, strength is better than crit and in a fight where you don't use recklessness, crit is better than strength. But because I like to use three points into improved discipline and because I really like <coughs> I really enjoy my time while doing recklessness. I like to go for a more strength heavy build than crit. One thing that is a little bit annoying as well is that the crit that you have uh, strongly depend on the buffs in your group and your raid be because you get so much crit buffed through maybe an enhancement shaman, maybe a retribution paladin, maybe um, favorite raid. Sometimes your group setup just differs from each raid so therefore going for the perfect amount of crit is for a lot of us not really possible. Therefore I just recommend you go for a balance here. Like 33, 30 to 33 percent crit berserker stand is completely fine. Then the other thing we need to talk about is obviously armor pen. I would su just suggest you go for as much armor pen as possible, especially if your raid setup is using a rogue for improved exposed armor and if you use curse of recklessness especially if those two factors are true go for as much armor pen as possible because armor pen gets more value the, the more there is so if you commit to armor pen i suggest you go for as much as possible another reason why especially as an arms warrior you want to go for as much armor pen as possible is because some of the items that you could use instead of armor pen items are items that give you hit or a lot of hit instead of the armor pen. And all those items are very good for rogues and fury warriors or even kebab warriors because they can profit from more hit. You can only profit from like your hit cap like 9% if there's no boomkin and that's it. Every little bit of hit that goes above that is completely wasted stats. For the Fury Warriors and the Rogues this is different and therefore I suggest go for as much armor pen as possible in your P3 beast list. The next thing, the next stat we need to talk about is Expertise. So Expertise is a great stat but the items that have Expertise on them are most of the time not worth it to the things that you could wear instead. The only item that is really worth it for expertise right now is the belt of 100 deaths. All the other items are not really worth it to use for expertise. And I actually tested that out, like I didn't only sim this, I as well used the complete expertise set on 
the PTR server here and the DPS is generally lower than with only one expertise piece. And if you go like only gloves, uh, glove and belt, you are not at 100% expertise, which in a lot of cases still means that you get like three dodges in a row, which feels extremely frustrating if you committed two pieces into expertise and you see the enemy dodge three times in a row, you're just getting so mad that I wouldn't really suggest uh, going for more expertise than on the belt. Ah yeah, one more honorable mention for stats would be stamina and armor. Like I said before, you just will pull threat here and there and you will just take damage in a raid. It's just that simple and every time you do so, stamina obviously and armor gives you a much greater chance to survive this damage. And remember, as a warrior, if you take damage, you get rage. So having a lot of stamina sometimes means that you maybe can stand in the fire a second longer and therefore dish out a lot more DPS actually. All right, and last we have talents. So for this, I'm just going to unlearn all my talent points real quick here. Now in the first row for the standard arms build, there's only one choice to max here and this is improved heroic strike. Improved rend is only really used in some of my troll builds, so you don't really want to spec into this. The next points I would suggest you go for deflection. Then you 100% want to have improved thunderclap, even if you have a warrior tank in your raid. It's just an insane talent and sometimes I mean if you only raid lock and you never use and you never uh, and you are never told to use thunderclap, okay, then you could spec into iron will. But other than that, you want to have improved thunderclap for questing, PvP and whatnot. And you can spec two more points into deflection or into iron will. It really depends. Like deflection obviously gives you a greater chance to survive pulling threat and iron will gives you a small chance to yeah, resist the stun. So you can decide. Then you can obviously, or you need to spec for deep wounds. I suggest you use anger management. One rage per three seconds doesn't, doesn't really seem like a lot, but this talent actually decreases or increases the time that your rage needs to run out as well. Like the tooltip is a little bit bugged. Then you can put one more point into deflection or one more point into improved overpower. So I honestly don't go for overpower a lot, but sometimes I do. And therefore I like to put one point into here. Then we have impale obviously. And then we have two hundred specialization. First I put in three here, then you obviously take death wish. You spec sword specialization to five out of five in case you have a sword. And then you can put two into improved discipline, one and two two-handed weapon specialization. Then you have obviously the choice. Five points into two-handed weapon specialization gives you more DPS overall. This is true. But this one gives you more fun overall, at least it gives me more fun, so click click, I'm using a point in here. Then we have obviously Blood Frenzy, this is the reason why we are brought to the weight. So we are take this, then Cruelty, 5 points, 5% 5 crit, this is a great deal. And then we have a meaningful choice here, we can go for Unbridled Wrath, which doesn't seem like a lot on a two-hander, like it gives you a chance to generate one rage every time you strike, but you can see unbridled rough procs in, in, the, um, in the combat lock, and it actually procs quite frequently. And there is a catch here, and this is that you can only use your latency slam when you have 15 rage. And I had this happen a lot of the time, that Unbridled Wrath made me able to cast the Latency Slam where I wouldn't be able to cast it if I wouldn't have specced into Unbridled Wrath. And every time this happens, or sometimes even a Mortal Strike, like sometimes you end up with 24 Rage after the Slam and with Unbridled Wrath there is a great chance that you can actually cast this Mortal Strike. And every time this happens, Unbridled Wrath has a much bigger impact than it than it originally seems to 
at first glance. However, if you have Solarian uh, Sapphire here, then obviously one more minute on your pre shouted better shot, like if you use Solarian Sunfire, you do it like this, you go into the, like, get rid of the rage first, like the boss is close to being pulled, and then you use Blood Rage, you cast your better shot and then you swap out Solarian Sunfire and then your better shot gives you seven, 70 attack power more. And this is not only for you, but this is for your whole group, so you and your whole group get one minute more of an extra 70 attack power. And this is obviously a very big thing. So if you use Solarian Sunfire pre-shouting, do not use Unbridled Wrath, use Booming Voice. Then obviously commanding pres presence and enrage there is not really a choice here improved slam obviously sweeping strikes and then yeah obviously weapon mastery and then you can put three points into flurry and there you have it so ah yeah there's, so there's one more choice so actually if you have two arms warriors you can drop blood frenzy to get two more points into flurry which would be kind of nice but most people don't have two arms warrior in the raid so most of the time this is not really something you can do <clears throat> so yeah and this this is it i think for this mammoth of a guide video like I said before, you can use the timestamps to maneuver through the chapters. And I hope you learned something. I bet you did. So until the next one, stay tuned and take care.